So again, as an administrator for your organization, you don't have the power to do that, but we can take care of it pretty quickly. There's, um, you know, there's a profanity filter on here. There's, um, you know, it is, uh, there are things that, the, that Rezu and of course Jeff and I are looking at all the time to make sure that there's not really crazy stuff out there, but we certainly don't know your organization um, and uh, the brand that you're wanting to put out there. But again, I would say I'd take this one with a grain of salt. Like this is a, an incredible opportunity and I think it's probably gonna, there may be some times where it's uncomfortable. Um, you know, not to the point of, of not liking it or endorsing it, but just it's a different way to engage people. But if you go back to that, um, that hotel example, right, it's just a very different ask to get an email from, um, you're going to this wedding and you get this email to make a donation to Helping Paws. That's a really different ask than getting a letter from the executive director of Helping Paws, right, at home. Both are really good. They're just very, very different appeals. Make sense? Okay. So I'm gonna, f I'm gonna fly through this part, which is just basically how does this work for donors, which kind of gets at your question of, you know, if an individual wants to get at the, uh, create a fundraiser, what are the tools for donors? This is just basically the search bar and it shows that this is a one-stop shop for all nonprofits. Give Men site defaults and shows Minnesota nonprofits. But a donor can go in here and pick all states in that search bar and pull up um, almost 1.7 million nonprofits from across the country. So again, it's that IRS data feed. Um, we partner with Charities Review Council. So for, your, for anyone who might have gone through that, there's a standards process that they, um, that they recommend in terms of fiscal accountability and those types of issues. It's a donor confidence <coughs> seal, essentially. So those seals show up on your page. Um, and then there's, this is, uh, I just think, one of the coolest things, and it's not rocket science at all, but it tracks a donor's online gifts. So basically, we think our hypothesis is probably the core user that's going to be using GiveMin is somebody who probably already gives and might give to a, a couple of organizations. Um, but when it comes to tax time, they say, you know, I don't know, I gave, to, I gave at church or I gave at temple, I gave at work, you know, I gave to my neighbor's event, I went to that dinner thing, and, and you just really don't have a sense of what you've given, how to track it, and that that doesn't feel necessarily strategic or satisfying, you know, that you might have given thousands of dollars and you're not quite sure what that total picture is. So super simple snapshot right here, literally a list of everyone that you've given to, the ability to print an IRS receipt, schedule a recurring donation, make another gift, and then just a pie chart with all the organizations you've given to. So that's the account. You can make a donation on GiveMin to your organizations without creating an account. You can just do a one-time transaction. You can do that multiple times. So if people are feeling a little hesitant, like, I don't want a password, what does that mean? Who's got my data? We don't see any data ever. Um, but if people feel hesitant, there are, you, know, you don't have to create an account. Um, again, donor tools, social media integration. So through a bunch of easy just icons, as a donor, I can hit um, Facebook, Twitter. I can send this out via email. And again, like if I were setting up a fundraiser page, say, OK, instead of giving gifts to my son for his birthday, let's make a donation to the crisis nursery. I can send that. I can hit the email button, and it can go into my entire email address with one click. So it's just that ability to spread. I'm going to keep, and I talked about fundraising, but again, from a donor perspective, what a cool tool that is to be able to do that um, for things that I care about to be able to fundraise. So um, I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the process, and then we're going to get into the activities. So, yeah, of course, question. Um, with going to the social media, is there, and I saw when I was doing mine that you have the donate buttons yeah. for web pages, can that be put on Facebook? Yes, can our widget go on Facebook? The donate now. I think the donate anywhere can. <coughs> so from a website, but not from Facebook, right? Not. Yep. So um, good question. So the question is, can the donate now button? There's a donate now button that you can take from GiveMin and put it on your website. So we don't have it equipped that from Facebook it will go. The widget can though. The donate anywhere widget. So there's another thing that you can download. It's called donate anywhere. And widget, you know, it's just a fancy name for, or a funny name, <laughs> for a little box that you can, down, you can put on your website to, to facilitate donations. So look for the Donate Anywhere. Okay. Um, it's going to be with the same, with the sort of set of buttons. And that can go on Facebook. That's a great question. 
Do you want to talk a little bit about why you'd put something on Facebook? Oh, just because you got all your friends and if you're really diligent in accepting all the friends that say, you know, do you know this person? It just gets you a broader base. Yeah. And yeah. Then they can follow you and you put out like with us, we're doing a house so we update the photos. Well then the people get to see the progress of the home the whole time. So. Yeah. That's great. That's a nice way to use Facebook. How many folks are on Facebook for your organizations? Mm -hmm. How about on Twitter? Um, how many people feel like you're supposed to be on Facebook? <laughs> Everybody? I don't know. I felt like that for a long time. Right? But you're like, what do I do with it? I don't know what to do with it. Um, I, I just think it's a great, you know, it's obviously they hit that huge milestone of 500 million um, members or um, and um, the largest growing segment on Facebook is women 55 years and older. So I think sometimes when we stereotypically think about we're trying to get younger donors through online, I think you know, just to be really conscious, there are people um, of all ages using these tools. So it's, I, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah? Um, I participated in the MS multiple sclerosis TRAM mm -hmm. series, mm -hmm. Great, so right from Facebook. Yeah, that's great. So the project pages and the fundraisers, you can click a button that is, uh, do we know the exact terminology, but basically track the giving. And it has, it's not a thermometer, but it's a green line that goes across the so same concept, right? So you're at $350 of your 500, right? So it's got that capability, which is nice. The, that other, the Donate Anywhere widget, which is this new, um, kind of new tool that's out there, allows a donor to make, you, you post this box. Um, you can do it on your website, you can do it on Facebook, and um, the donor will go in and click and make a donation to your organization right there. They don't leave, they don't go to Razu, they don't go, so that's, that's the difference of that one. They're, um, don't put this on tape. They're still working a few things out on that one, so um, I, would, I would wait a little bit. I'd start, if you haven't already, with the Donate Now button. Um, and, and direct folks to, to give men. So when, when, a don when a donor makes a donation to you guys on give men, to your organization, what happens? The person who's set up as the admin immediately gets pinged that says, Dana made a donation, it's for $10, here's her information. So we have it defaulted that donors will share their information and it's email, phone number, actually I don't know if it's phone, uh, email uh, and mailing address, I think are the, the categories. Um, and we have a 96% share rate. So there is a good amount of data that will, you know, 96% I think is very high. Basically that 4% means I want to be anonymous. And, I wanna, and being anonymous means you get, the organization does not get the contact information. Um, so you immediately get an email. Then the, um, uh, the donor immediately gets an email as well. And uh, literally in real time, so instantly, Thank you for the donation. It says it comes from Razu and Give Men, and then the name of your organization appears in the body of the email. That email serves as an IRS receipt, tax deductible receipt, um, and no goods or services in exchange. So again, no ticket sales through this, um, or memberships through this. Your administrator can access your donor information at any time. So it's just a tab when you log in. And, um, and it is downloadable to an Excel or a CSV file. So um, uh, easily importable, I hope, into your donor database, whatever kind of systems you use. Um, and donations, um, donations are paid out the 10th of the following month. So everything in August will be paid out September 10th. So basically it's all held and you get one check. We have had um, an exciting transition. I think this is the next slide. I'm sorry, this follow-up yeah. follow note. Do you re how do you recommend that? Great question. So, um, so the question is about okay. follow-up. Yep. So, so your donor immediately gets that email, right? But it's coming from Razu and Givman. It's telling them, yes, I made, an organ or I made a donation to my, the clinic. Um, what you, what best practice, what we recommend is obviously this is your donor. I, Givman, I never see your donor information. I don't know who's giving to you. This is your relationship with this person who's coming to you, made a donation to your organization through this, this website, right? So, I, 
do what you would do with your donors, right? You're getting a new donor. So what's your acknowledgement um, process? Is it to send a thank you right away? Do you have like a you know, four day, two week, kind of whatever your parameters are? The one thing I, that I would highly recommend um, that I think is different about online giving is to consider doing an email thank you. Oh, sorry. I'll give you a long answer for that, sorry. Um, so, so, you know, just think about what's right. So, I mean, if you're getting a $5,000 gift and it's a new donor, I'd pick up the phone, right? <laughs> You'd be like, hello, who are you? Thank you so much. Um, if it's a $50 gift, send an email. Or, you know, you have to figure out what's right for your organization, sort of what the, the limits are um, or what the right amounts are. Um, but I hear more um, anecdotally about people saying, I make, um, you know, $25 gifts on GiveMin and I get glossy brochures, I get put on the direct mail list, and I will never give to that organization again. So people are, what's tricky is it's a personal preference, right? But people, I think, are telling you something if they're coming to your organization for the first time digitally. If they're coming to you online, um, it's okay to correspond online. Make sense? Question, hi. Dana, do you have any, have you tracked or does Resi ch um, track the demographic information about the donors, age, sex? We, d we don't right now. We okay. did a survey for Give to the Max Day. We'll do another survey for Give to the Max okay. Day. I wish, I wish we had more demographic information. We're right now trying to keep the experience so simple for donors that we don't want to burden it or slow it up with survey information. Um, but our survey, um, I can, I can, uh, we'll post that online, um, the information. I mean, we, demographically, we were, ske we were skewing actually, I think, in the 40s and 50s, um, majority 60, 40 female to male, but it's from a big giving event, so I don't even know how that data I don't think really truly helps, if that makes sense. Um, we heard anecdotally from folks on really age-wise a big wide spectrum, people who are giving for the first time in their teens, um, and my grandma who gave online. She counts. So I wanted to just share uh, this quick announcement and then we're gonna do some activities. Um, so we just announced, literally last week, uh, we used to use Network for Good. Maybe some of you guys use Network for Good off your, how many people have a Donate Now button on your website? So a way to facilitate. So I'm just curious, who, what vendors you guys use? Somebody, okay. But you've got it on there, that's good. How are you? PayPal, okay. PayPal. PayPal as well? No. Oh, GiveMe? All right, I need candy, I need prizes. Um, well, GiveMin has been free, it has been. We've been subsidizing these fees, right? So I have fundraised and, and, and foundations like um, Otto Bremer and others have been subsidizing these fees, so it's free. So I would say, get your GiveMin button out there on your websites because it's free. There's no cost to process these transactions until October 1st. Starting October 1st, it'll be a flat rate of 2.9%, um, which, Literally, we've you know, been working all summer on this um, to, to get this rate. Uh, U.S. Bank is donating their portion of um, kind of any, any expense. Credit cards are a nightmare, right? There's like 500 things that make up a credit card fee. So what U.S. Bank can influence, they're giving us everything for free. They're a piece of it. So um, thanks to this partnership, we're able to offer this, this lower rate. PayPal is lower. PayPal is... Oh, I want to say 2.2% plus 30 cents transaction. Um, so, you know, if it's just about the transactions, it's going to be cheaper. But I would say, you know, we have all the, we have the project pages, the fundraiser pages, kind of the ability and what we're doing to grow giving and drive tra traffic and market to people. All of that comes with GiveMin.